Hello, hello, and welcome to Connect In. Connect In is a weekly experience about why it's so important to get out of our head and back into our heart. I really appreciate you taking the time for yourself, which is becoming less and less available again, I guess is the word I want to use, because we are starting to speed up again in life. And so being able to take care of yourself, being able not only physically, but mentally and emotionally is really, really essential so that you can live as your brightest, best self. You know, when you are exploring your heart and your soul, your emotions, what's stopping you, all of that. But it's your inner game. Like, how do you manage yourself? So that's what we're going to talk about today some. Um, before we go any further, I would like to invite you to please subscribe, like, and share this recording because um, I believe that the more of us that are more empowered in ourselves, the better the world is. And we do that simply by showing up, showing up as who we are in our most authentic and amazing way. So, and also, if you would like to receive a book that I wrote called Your Heart's Yes, it's a short book about the steps to begin to manage, to connect in with yourself. And there's a pretty groovy um, audio recording in there as well. And if you're interested in that, go over to DominiCelebrity.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can sign up there to receive your heart's yes. Why is it important to get out of our head and back into our heart? So when we are up here, and you know we all spend an enormous amount of time up here, we're trained from a really young age, um, it's in our ancestry universe of, you know, the smarter you are, the better you are. Um, the more we're in our head, the less we're able to feel. And in some, for some reasons, that could be important. Like if you're in pain, you don't really want to always be in your body to feel. But when we're not feeling, we're also missing the cues that our body, heart, and soul are giving us to, to, to live our life. When we're in our head, we're planning, we're thinking, we're in the past, woulda, shoulda, couldas, or we're in the futures, gotta, 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 right? But we're not here now. And when we are in the past or in the future, we're actually using an enormous amount of energy to navigate ourselves. When we are here with our breath, with our belly, with our feet, we are in what I like to call the, the timeless present moment. It's extraordinary. When we are in our body, connected and grounded and centered in ourselves, we have resources to build energy. We have resources to access our inner truth, our inner knowing, our inner guidance. That is the inner game. Now, like any game, <laughs> there are adversaries or, um, or heroes or heroines, right? Um, that we are navigating with all the time. And I guess the adversaries are what I like to call our inner demons or our inner critic or that part of us that rears its head when we don't feel worthy, when we don't feel good enough, when we get super shy and can't speak up for ourselves. We all have them. And honestly, it's not about banishing them. It's about getting them under control. So that's part of the inner game. These stories that we tell ourselves that diminish our, our gifts, 
are just not useful. Like in Taoism, the whole concept is to really show up as the person you're meant to be. And so we can look to nature as a really beautiful example of that. Like a pine tree is a pine tree. A willow is a willow. Uh, a crocus is a crocus. A dandelion is a dandelion. And there's no doubt, you know, if you look at a dandelion, I got leaves that look like this. I have flowers that look like this. When I start to go to seed, my seeds look like this. I grow about this height, depending on my environment. But, you know, there is common things that dandelion knows who dandelion is. With humans, we have this thing called free will. And free will is like, you know, I can be this, but I really like the way this other person is doing this and how they dress and how they talk and all these things. And, you know, this is cultural, right? This starts at a really young age of looking at, um, you know, influencers and how they dress and how they eat and how they talk. You know, you could see it in the younger generation that they're kind of curating themselves to fit what they think they should be. And God, isn't that a disservice? And it is only until we hit 40, 50, 60 or older that we start looking around and going, ah, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, some people do that younger. Um, but we look around and we're like, you know, I don't think I want to do that anymore. That's us coming back to our free will, right? And so we are all incredible, unique individuals. This is all a com inner game conversation, right? We are all these amazing, unique individuals. And if we want to live in our strength, in our uniqueness, because really that is what we offer the world, is our unique selves, right? We have to start looking at, I know I feel like I'm doing a lot of we should have to kind of conversations. But the invitation is to really look at what are the stories that are holding you back? And you know, it, you could sit down and say, oh yeah, when I get stressed, I do this. And sometimes you don't even recognize the stories or have a label for the stories, but there's behavior that you start to recognize. We can get defensive when we get confronted. We could, um, you know, drop into that not worthiness, not having enough. There's two ways I, I think about we when we lose sight or vision of who we are, we can either become the doormat or the pushy one, right? The doormat is I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. The other end of that is I'm just going to plow right through these things, right? There are inner game ways that we manage trying to stay comfortable in who we think we are. Does that make sense? But it's a battle. Right? We're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. And in a way, we're living on this side of ourselves and on that side of ourselves. But what we're not doing is we're not coming inside ourselves. Right? And again, when we come back in, when we just take a moment and land back into our body and our heart, these critics, demons, get quieter even if it's for that nanosecond. So when we're in our head is when we're in our head, our inner critics are um, much more prevalent. They kind of run the show just a little bit more. Do you find that? Yeah. When we come back into our body and kind of feel, get centered and grounded in our body, kind of connect in with our truth, which is how I like to talk about our heart, there is less of the mind game kicking in. You are more congruent to your vision and your truth of yourself. And, you know, we're humans. We come up, we come down. We come up, we come down. 
But when we come back into here and listen to our hearts, yes, this is where we can start to become our brightest, best self, dandelion, pine, willow, rose, whoever that is, right? And um, if you want a little taste of what your heart's yes is, again, go over to DominiCelebrity.com, download the free book, fill out the form at the bottom, fill out the, and when you do, you'll get received the free book and the audio recording to help you connect into your heart's yes. So the inner game has a lot of levels, right? Step one is if we're in our head, we have, a, we have a higher chance of kind of pushing through life, kind of making things happen, thinking things through, but in the thinking th things through, when you find yourself I, saying things like, I think versus I feel, when you think you're in your head, when you feel you're in your body, so it's not that you banish the head or banish the body. What we need to do is come in alignment with our head, our body, and our heart. That's how we live a heart-centered life. That's how we live a life that is fully and truly authentic to ourselves. So when we're in our head, there is the sensation of pushing, of challenge, of uh, sometimes it could actually make you exhausted. When you are being led by your head, sometimes it can feel like you are pushing a boulder up the hill. When you're in your head, you kind of lose sight because you're pushing, pushing, pushing of those dreams that you've had, of those, when I grow up, I wanna be, I would really like to get a new job, I would like to show up and be fully myself with a loving partner. When all those things, which when you come into your truth, they go, you go, yeah, I really do feel worthy of this relationship. I am smart enough and experienced enough to go for this job. Right? Take a moment. I think this is a really beautiful opportunity just for a quick moment. Bring your awareness to your breath, to your belly, down to your feet. Wiggle your toes, right? This way you're the furthest away from your head as possible. Breath to belly to feet. That's actually the first step of connecting into your heart's yes. And just take a moment now, right? Breath to belly to feet. Place your hands on your heart. Feel into one of those wishes. You know, who is it that you really want to be? Do you want to be just a more calm and centered person? Yeah. Right? You can feel that resonance in your body when you speak truth. Do you want to go for a new job? Do you want to leave the job that you're in? Is this job feeding you? Is this job helping you thrive on all, all levels? Not just financially, but on all levels. Can you go towards what you, makes your heart sing? Right? There's, there's a resonance of truth in your body when you hear these things. Right? That's what it's like to be heart-centered. That's what it's like to get out of your head and back into your body. Following your heart's yes is a really brilliant way to do the inner game. Once you know and experience, and this takes time, your heart's yes, you'll know when those demons are truth, right? or they're not. You'll know when your demons are running the show, or you know when your heart and your intuition and your inner guidance is running the show. 
there's a lot of different ways to manage the inner game, but what's important is first you learn to trust yourself and your inner guidance, your heart's yes. So here's a quick little exercise again, um, just to kind of fine tune this body sensed embodied experience of knowing when you're in your heart space or not. Take a moment and just feel how you feel in your body. Just notice, you know, what's there. And then say to yourself, my name is, and truly just say the name that you like to go by. And just notice what you feel. It may, that you're, may be that your eyes kind of open a little bit more or there's just kind of this expanded feeling in your body. And then go ahead and say uh, your name is opposite gender, opposite of you, right? So I always say, say your name is Harry if you're a woman. Unless your name's Harry, then pick another name. And if you're a man, you know, my name is Debbie. You know, just shift up your name. And notice how that feels in your body. Okay. So go ahead and say, my name is, and go by the name you go by. And just notice how that lands in your being. Now go ahead and say, my name is, and do the opposite name. And notice how you feel. Chances are when you are stepping into your name, the name that you like to go by, there is a little bit more ease, maybe a little bit more of an expanded experience, something like that. When you go, when you say the name that you don't go by, there's a bit of a contraction, right? So your name is a bit yes feeling, truth feeling, no is a little bit more contracted. It's a really simple way to know whether you're in your heart space or your head space. When you are exploring that yes, no, with your body, the yes is a way that can help guide you. And the no, right, because this is where, when we're in our body, we're in this uh, inner guidance space. So when we're in our body, that yes and no can allow you to kind of navigate life a little bit more, right? That yes and no, that's a body sense. It's a completely different experience than your head, yes and no, right? And so when you're in your head, you're thinking, you're planning, you're in the past or the future, right? When you're in your body, you are connected in with your inner guidance, you're connected in with your heart. And from there, you can do yes and no in a way that is true and authentic for you. So we'll be exploring the inner game a lot throughout February. And I invite you this week to pop over to DominiCelebrity.com. Go ahead, sign up for the mailing list, get your heart's yes booklet. Explore this yes, no. Explore um, building a muscle memory of knowing truth or not truth that is body informed. That is the first step for exploring your inner game. Um, it is my honor that you're here and watching and I really appreciate it. So like, share, comment. I would love to know what you have to say, think, feel, experience about this exercise. And um, I hope you have a brilliant week. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye.